most of our social infrastructure is rooted in economics and it is the thread between yeah how we how we eat how we work how we live or where we choose to live and I guess really every material and physical dimension of our lives interacts with economics so it, it plays a very central role in society um, but the question does it serve the common good um, I'd say we would all be best off if these material decisions are chosen wisely so it definitely can serve the common good economic relations are pervasive to society they, they happen all the time from the moment you wake up uh, everything that you uh, do in your in your household you at some point had to pay something for it so you had to uh, choose which which products to buy and in which markets and and then you still have subscriptions and you have a job and and that job is part of a job market and, and so on and so forth a good understanding of economics um, should help people make the right decisions good economic policies absolutely will serve the common good but I think it's it's also fair to say, and we've had plenty of examples of this, that bad economic policies uh, can make life, uh, in the words of Hobbes, uh, nasty, brutish, and short. It provides tools from the study of abstract systems, provides useful tools which can be applied in uh, policy formation at least in principle, policy formation should be oriented towards the common good. In fact, it isn't. It's oriented towards the needs of those powerful enough to design and shape it. Karl Polanyi called classical economics the most formidable conceptual instrument of destruction. Economics becomes dangerous when it supplies plausible but wrong diagnosis of grave societal problems and thus points us in the wrong direction. But economics can also be very useful. Right now, to become a force for good, economics needs to help shift the understanding of prosperity from material affluence to well-being. We know that economics uh, as a, as a you know, theoretical uh, construct uh, works pretty well when things are normal, at least in macroeconomics, but they have proven to be less useful as a ben benchmark to understand when things don't work so well, like the 2008 financial crisis, like uh, major uh, global pandemic um, uh, kind of crises or disequilibrium. So there are gaping holes in the profession. There's no doubt about it. Just like religion traditionally played the role of what, legitimizing existing power, the power of the emperor, the power of the feudal lord, um, and at the same time was utilized by usurpers and rebels in order to oppose the oligarchs, the feudal lords' rule through some kind of heretical schism. That is the role that economic theory uh, plays. Um, the fact that it uses mathematics gives it uh, the appearance of a scientific, non-religious, objective um, uh, role that um, increases its religious power. <laughs> The Earth at the center of the universe and the planets and the stars rotating around it on spheres uh, was a vision of religious perfection. And when you challenge that, you, uh, you were challenging the church. And in economics, the same ideological element has driven the model that people have built without them really being conscious even that there is an ideology there. We have to realize that this Economics is to serve society, not the other way around. And so it's a tool, but again, we have to think about the wider context to make economics serve our needs as a community, rather than try to make the community fit into our economic model. Just the tools that you use in economic theory in order to gain something, 
would result in a better common good if that's the, the, the end goal. But if it's misplaced or if you take a particular policy of one particular country and put it elsewhere, it's not going to solve, solve the, the, the means that it was supposed to. And I think that's the same as it goes for the common good. You need to know how it would actually reach the end in order for it to reach the end. It should serve the common good. I mean, that's certainly why I became an economist uh, or decided to study economics was this notion that economics, it's more than that. You have to know economics in order to effectively serve the common good. And what do I mean by effectively? In that to serve the common good, in most cases, there are going to be winners and losers. There, there are very few cases where you make a policy decision and everybody wins. <laughs>